The success or failure of your plastic pipe system depends on the strength of the pipe connections. Properly cemented joints are essential for a leak-free plastic pipe system. In this video, we'll show you how to join small diameter pipes the right way so you can have confidence in a job well done. Before you begin, make sure you're prepared with the right materials for the job. The proper primer, solvent cement, and if necessary, cleaner. The right size applicator, pipe preparation tools, and enough people in your joining crew for the size of the job. Start by cutting the pipe as square as possible, using a power saw, miter box saw, or plastic tubing cutter. Check the end of the pipe to make sure it has been cut square. Remove inside diameter burrs or raised beads with an internal deburring tool, knife, or power beveling tool. To remove the burrs or raised beads on the outside diameter of the pipe, use a file, external deburring tool, or power beveling tool that will produce a 3 seconds of an inch, 10 to 22 degree chamfer, or bevel. Now, with a clean, dry rag, wipe away any dirt, grease, shavings, or moisture from inside and outside the pipe, pipe bell, or fitting socket. You need to make sure all the surfaces you're going to join are free of foreign material. This includes any chemical, paint, coatings, or any other residue which may have stuck to the pipe during storage. Next, check the fit. A good dry fit occurs when the pipe enters the fitting at least one-third to two-thirds of the way into the socket without being forced. This dry fit should not be too tight or loose enough to jiggle. A net fit occurs when the pipe bottoms into the fitting socket with no interference. Measure the fitting socket length and mark this distance on the pipe outer diameter to indicate to where the primer and solvent cement are to be applied. To ensure the fitting has been fully inserted, add a couple inches to this distance and make a second check mark on the pipe as the primer and cement will remove the first mark. Do you have the applicator that will work best for your job? You'll need a dauber for small diameter pipe. We don't recommend swabs or rollers on pipes smaller than four inches. The applicator size should be approximately one half the pipe diameter. When handling primer and solvent cement, Wear safety glasses to protect your eyes and nitrile gloves to protect your hands. And be aware, weld-on solvent cement and primers are flammable and should not be stored or used near sparks, heat, flames, or other sources of ignition. Keep any equipment that causes sparks or flames, such as welding torches, away from the work area. Applying primer is an extremely important step in creating a first-class, long-lasting joint. Primer softens the joint areas so the joint can fuse together. Without primer, fusion is weak and a joint may fail. Before you prime, check the penetration or softening ability of the primer on a scrap piece by scraping a few thousandths of an inch. This will help gauge the proper amount of primer and rotational force to be applied to the joining surfaces during actual installation. Now, apply the primer. Tilt the fitting socket downward, vigorously working the primer into the fitting socket and keeping the surface and applicator wet until the surface has been softened. Remove any puddles. In the same manner, apply the primer to the end of the pipe equal to the depth of the fitting socket. Then, apply a second round of primer to the fitting socket. Don't allow primer to run down the inside of the fitting or pipe. In the case of bell end pipe, don't allow the primer to run past the bell socket into the pipe. For each application, rotate the applicator at least 10 times to ensure proper primer coating. Shake the can of solvent cement. While the joining surfaces are still wet and without hesitation, apply the solvent cement in a full even layer onto the pipe outside diameter, equal to the depth of the fitting socket then immediately apply a medium layer of solvent cement to the fitting socket. Without delay, apply a second even layer of cement on the pipe. For each application, rotate the applicator at least 10 times to ensure proper cement coating. Most joint failures are caused by insufficient application of cement. Again, do not let the cement run down the inside of the fitting or pipe. Working quickly, 
Assemble the pipe and fitting while the cement is still wet. If it's not completely wet, re-coat before assembly. Push the fitting onto the pipe and rotate it an eighth to a quarter turn until it reaches the pipe stop. Do not continue to rotate the fitting after the pipe has reached the socket bottom. The check mark measurement on the pipe will help verify that the pipe is fully inserted into the fitting socket. Hold the joint together for 30 seconds or more. This will eliminate movement or joint push-out. Finally, wipe off the excess cement, including the ring or bead around the socket entrance. This will help the joint to cure faster. Avoid disturbing the joint as it cures. Follow the Weldon Set and Cure timetable before handling or hydro-testing the piping system. As we finish up, let's review the four best practices of solvent cementing. You should apply a primer to make joining surfaces soft and semi-fluid. You should apply a generous amount of solvent cement. You should assemble while still wet and fluid. You should allow the cement to dry, set, and cure for strong joints. For more than 70 years, Weldon has been the global leader in solvent cement technology, not only because of our fail-proof products, but also because of our commitment to you, our customers. We're dedicated to providing you with the knowledge and education so that every job you perform delivers the best possible results. When it comes to joining your pipes, we know that trust can't be compromised, and we're proud to deliver the world's most trusted bond. Contact us to learn more and sign up for free in-person training.